everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my first and my monthly favorite series. So at the end of every month, I'm going to share with you the products that I've loved throughout the month. So if that's interesting, stay tuned. This first one I'm going to do, since I started my channel mid-January, it's kind of like my favorites from January slash February. So quite a few products to cover. So let's jump into it. First thing I want to talk about is skincare because I love makeup, but first and foremost, I love skincare because skincare can really just like make or break your entire makeup day. So let me show you my favorite products. The La Roche-Posay Tellarian Dermo Cleanser. I've mentioned this in my how to start your skincare routine as well as my personal skincare routine and I just love this cleanser. I can count on it when my skin feels irritated, when it feels dry, when it feels dehydrated. It's just a very reliable cleanser that I can use in the morning, in the evening, summer, winter, spring, or fall. This is the one cleanser I can always count on to treat my skin well. I will mention, I've said this before, this is not great for removing like heavy duty makeup or long wear water resistant sunscreen. For that, I like to use a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm and then go with this as my skin cleanser. So love this for my second cleanse or my cleanse in the morning. So, I mentioned this in my first haul video over on my Instagram. My Instagram, if you weren't following, is every week I'm sharing anything I've purchased throughout the week. So if you want to see the things I buy, things that are coming to my channel, check out my Instagram and that will be under my Instagram TVs. That is the Sana Ultra Creamy Soy Milk kind of lotion or a toner. Um, I mentioned this in my winter skincare concerns video and this is just a great kind of rich first treatment essence, whatever you want to call that stuff. It's a good hydrating kind of toner and I'm loving this for winter when my skin is feeling a little bit more dry, a little bit more dehydrated and in the warmer months I was using the regular version of this one. Um, it's just great and around the $15, the 15 Canadian dollar price point, you can't go wrong with it. It's wonderful. Dryser and You've heard me talk about this in other videos. I love this. This is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. And I just wanna show you like, I'm I'm almost done with this one. And this is a big size I got at Costco. Just like, this is my safe everyday one. So unlike some of the other CeraVe moisturizers, this does not include niacinamide, just their kind of signature ceramide kind of compound. And um, it's great, it's gentle. I use it on my face when I feel lazy. Um, I use it on my face if I feel irritated, but it's my daily moisturizer for my body. And I like that on my body, I can apply this before I put like my pajamas on or my clothes on. And it doesn't leave my skin feeling like thick and greasy. It just absorbs very quickly and hydrates. And since I started using this on my body, my body skin has never felt or looked better. And that also has something to do with the product I'm gonna talk in just a minute. So love this and recommend this to everyone. So the other product I was mentioning for my body is a newer product. And unfortunately you can't run out to your local drugstore and buy this. Um, this is a topical acne treatment. It's called tri tritiferine. <laughs> I'm probably messing up. Brand name for this one is Acleaf. This is a prescription only retinoid. I got this through my dermatologist. Um, my dermatologist recommended this to me for body breakouts, specifically like, like mid back, because when I was in aesthetic school, I took a body treatment class. And for that one, one of the last things we did was a body microdermabrasion. And I don't know what it what it was about that, but it just, it took the acne I struggled with on my back already and just magnify it. And I've been using this since the, right before, so around like the second week of January, I started using this and I don't feel like my back has been, my, well, my back has always been prone to break out since like puberty, but okay, since maybe I was like in high school, I've not had a blemish-free back and it's because of this. This and my CeraVe, 
I am so happy. I did try this on my face because on my face, I normally use my prescription tretinoin. A little too strong for my face, so I'm gonna stick with my tretinoin on my face, this on my body. And I also use this if I get like, cause I'm doing like IPL treatments to remove like unwanted body hair. And I use this anywhere I get like an ingrown and it's wonderful. So if you struggle with body acne, ingrown hairs, talk to your dermatologist about this and I think you will really enjoy it. And also retinoids, great for fighting signs of aging. So we don't just have signs of aging on our face. We also have signs of aging on our body. This is wonderful for that as well. So talk to your dermatologist if you are interested in a product like this for your body. My favorite, you've heard me talk about this. You read my description boxes when I list like what the products are on my face. Read my blog when I talk about products I use under foundations. And one that you'll see more often than not is my La Roche-Posay and Thelios Dermo Kids Lotion SPF 50 Plus. It's a good combination sunscreen, so you've got a mix of mineral filters and chemical filters. It does leave a little bit of a white cast, but for me and my skin tone, that's it's not a big deal. Like it kind of fades after about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and if you're someone who wears makeup, this does really well under makeup and your foundation product will cover the tint for this. Um, on my day to day, I'll put this on and if I'm not wearing makeup and I don't want to use a tinted sunscreen, I'll put one or two layers of this all over my face and neck and then use a little bit of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural Powder on top and that counteracts any type of kind of white cast I might see. So I love, love, love this product. So the next product I want to talk about is a newer sunscreen. I've had this in my collection for about three, three weeks and I'm loving this. Um, this is the Dermatology Protect and Glow SPF 45 in the light tint. This is another combination sunscreen. So it has three different chemical filters, one mineral filter, and the tint is gorgeous. So I've mentioned before, my face in comparison to my neck and body, my face tends to have more of a red pinky tone. And this is a little bit more of a light, fair to light yellow tint. So for me, it just kind of balances out my face. It does well under makeup if I want to layer it under makeup for a little bit of extra coverage. But for days when I just need a one and done kind of sunscreen product, and I don't want to worry about a cast or putting on powder. I am loving this one. Both of these products with them having chemical filters, they do not burn or sting around my eyes, which is huge for me because most chemical or combination sunscreens really sting around my eyes. And my husband has a similar issue and I got him another, I got him a different sunscreen from Dermatology that is not tinted and that's an all chemical. And he uses it under his eyes, over his eyelids, and he's not had any complaints to me about stinging. So these are a little bit more pricey. I believe it was around $45. I could be mistaken, um, but I will link it down below. and. If you're looking for a good sunscreen tinted or not, I think you will really enjoy the Dermatology one. Skincare product that I've been loving this month. That is my Avin Sickle Fate. So I like this. This is a good protective barrier balm. I use it as an all over moisturizer on the nights when I use my tretinoin on my face. And every night when I feel any type of irritation, I will use it around the corners of my eyes, around my lips. Great barrier defense balm. It's great. I love the La roche B5 balm as well. They're just great protective balms when your skin needs that little extra bit of comfort. So great. And I think anyone with skin will really, really love this. So let's talk about some hair products. The first one I've been loving is it's a newer one to me because I normally wasn't one for using kind of like clarifying or detoxifying hair products because I didn't wear a lot of hair product. And now since getting to social media, being on YouTube, I'm having to do a lot more with my hair because if I don't, my hair just looks like flat and lifeless and um, using more products. I feel like my normal everyday shampoo, it does fine for day to day, but once a week, I've been liking that little extra boost for just kind of making my hair feel a little bit more refreshed for the week going forward. And for that, I'm loving the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Detox Shampoo. I've also tried one by, I think it was like the 
Neutrogena Clarifying Shampoo. That one wasn't bad, but it just left my hair fun a little dry. And this one, I've not noticed any type of feelings of dryness. So for me, this has been my favorite kind of detoxifying, clarifying shampoo. And I, if you want something to really kind of cleanse the hair, it's a nice one. It does have a fragrance. So if fragrance bothers you, skip this one. It's a shampoo, it rinses off, so fragrance kind of gets like the pass for me. Loving, I talked about this, I believe I talked about this in my winter favorite, or my winter kind of skincare concerns is a good hair hydrator, but I'm loving the Kerastase Chronologiste, and this is kind of like, they call it a thermique, so it's good for heat protectant. Um, it also, you can use it when you heat sell your hair or when you don't heat sell your hair, so I normally use this at night when I'm doing my skincare routine, so I'll put on my minidoxal for my scalp. I'll put that on, let it dry, and then I'll put this on as like the very last up of my evening routine. Comb it through, I'll use my wet brush to help distribute it through the hair. And since using this, my hair has just felt a lot more soft. It's felt a lot more kind of manageable. And in the morning when I wake up, um, I do use kind of silk pillowcases so my hair doesn't get completely disheveled as I sleep. But in the morning, if it gets a little roughed up, I can just kind of use my fingers put it into place. I don't have to worry about using a comb or a brush or anything like that. I really love this. And this also does have the inclusion of, I believe, vitamin C and vitamin E. So they claim a little bit of UV protection, but for me, if I'm going to be outside, I'll put on a hat just to protect my scalp. Um, but loving this, and it's also, it works well, like before you heat style. So before I blow dry my hair, I will use this as well, just maybe a half a pump if it's during the day. This does have fragrance. It's Kerastase. It does have their kind of signature floral smell. So if you are bothered by scents, and I would skip this because this is a leave-on product. So kind of strong. I could still smell on my pillow the next morning. It doesn't bother me. I really enjoy the Kerastase smell, but if you're sensitive, skip this and look for a different one product. So my last hair product, and this is the Sexy Hair, Big Sexy Hair Powder Play. So it's just like a micro fine powder. And when it contacts with your skin, it almost turns into like this, like, it's like a wet feeling. It sounds very strange, but um, my hair is fine. Um, I do struggle with male balding powder. And so my hair is thinner than I would like it to be, but we're working on that. I've seen a little bit of improvement, but that video will be coming in a couple more months because I want to make it through the full six months to see kind of how that works. But this has been great. It adds a lot of great volume to my hair. It adds a nice grit to where I don't have to use a separate styling pomade or anything like that. This has just been a really, really great one. And um, I like it. I will say though, um, if you don't like your hair feeling like dirty or gritty, you will not like this. It does leave that kind of texturized kind of grittiness to it. And um, yeah, it makes your hair feel kind of dirty and gritty. So if you don't like that, you won't like this. But if you wash your hair every day like I do, or you don't mind that feeling of product in the hair, you might really like this for those days when you just need a little extra boost with your volume. Mistaken, I have one more hair product and that is something that I've had this, well, let's talk about it. So this is the Orbe Freestyler Working Hairspray. I can't even tell you what number bottle this is. I started using this when I first started working at Nordstrom. Um, it's an expensive hairspray. It's a good hairspray. I like that I can still kind of, it's a flexible hold. So I can still kind of mess with my hair, restyle it, kind of zhuzh it up through the day. But this has just been a savior for my hair, especially now I keep it here at my beauty station. Um, I have another one in my washroom or bathroom. I say both, um, <laughs> but keep this in my beauty area, in my bathroom, and I can just tame any flyaways with like a little like disposable like spoolie wand. And it's great. And I like that my hair doesn't feel crunchy because I don't like those stronghold hairsprays that when you put them on, you try to move your hair, you feel like your hair is gonna snap because it's just so dried. But um, I really like this. And if you don't mind spending extra on a hairspray, it's a really, really good one. Um, so strongly recommend this Orbe Flexible Hairspray. When I was looking back at the products that I've tried through the month, there was only a handful of makeup products that really stood out to me that are like 
really, really good. Some of them are new favorites. Some of them are favorites I've had for years. So we'll start off with an old reliable. And if you know me, you can already guess, but that is my Mac Studio Fix powder and I wear the shade N4. So looks like this. For me, it's a great skin tone match. Mac says this is a true matte finish powder foundation and it is matte, but with the products I put under my skin prep, I normally get a very glowy finish, which I love. So MAC Studio Fix Powder with the right prep work, it works for everyone. If you wanna know more, I have a Foundation Friday on this and I have a detailed blog post. So if you wanna know more about MAC Studio Fix Powder, check that out. If you check out the video that went up before this, which was another Foundation Friday, I tested this foundation and I fell in love. That foundation is the YSL all hours foundation. Once again, it was a great shade match for me. So I have the shade BR20, um, where the MAC is a good shade match. It runs a tiny bit peachy. This runs a tiny bit pink, but they're both very workable for my skin. This one, it has more coverage than I like on a day-to-day -day basis. However, here in Toronto, things are starting to open back up. So, you know, maybe next time I have like a Zoom night with friends or I get to go to a dinner with friends, this is going to be like a special occasion going out foundation because it is beautiful. It wears well. It works with many different primers I tried. And for being a matte, it never looks dry or heavy. It's just a really, really good kind of for me a special occasion foundation to talk about this in the foundation friday where i did the um ysl but i always like to throw in some mini reviews because i test more than just foundation and for me doing two uploads a week right now um i want to have some like not all makeup because for me and my interest i have a lot more interest in the beauty spectrum than just makeup so like to throw my mini reviews in and one of the products I reviewed last week is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter and I have the shade Fair 2. Um, this is my second bottle. I love this. It is a great kind of neutral champagne for me. It's the liquid version of the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Highlight, which I love. Um, that will probably end up in a favorite at some point too. But for me, that is, even though I'm not showing it in today's video, that Laura Mercier Highlight is phenomenal. It's so good. Nice highlight, doesn't emphasize texture, and neither does this. This almost smooths the look of texture on the skin, and I absolutely love it. I bought this sample during the last Sephora sale. I did not try it right away, but one of my really good friends from back home, she bought this. She's like, you have to try it. So I'm like, okay. I had a lot of other primers, so I bought the mini size, and that is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. Um, I love this and thank you, Erin, for telling me about it because I I love the original silk canvas, the like bomb one. So I was kind of sleeping on this one because I'm like, I already got one. I don't need both. And um, when this runs out, I will buy the full size because it is really good and it makes your foundation kind of look smoother hang on to the skin and just look, it, it's wonderful. And I believe that this would work for everyone. If you have very dry skin, you might prefer the more balm style one, but this is a really good primer. I've mentioned this a few times now and I have the mini size, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Um, like I said, this is the mini. I do not, I don't know how this product does what it does because I've said and believe in my last video, the YSL foundation review. The ingredients, there's, I, when I read the ingredients, there's nothing stand out. Like there's no like off the wall, out of the ordinary ingredients. And somehow this foundation smooths the look of your skin and makes your makeup almost look like a second skin. And it's just really good. I mean, only, only product, only foundation, I should say, I've put this over where it didn't make much of a difference was the MAC Studio Fix Powder, but I love how this looks on its own with or without a setting spray. But on top of other powder foundations, liquid foundations, this just makes everything look really nice. I will also mention that this setting spray, it does have a scent to it. 
I noticed the scent doesn't linger very long. Like almost like when you spray it, it's gone. So that doesn't bother me with this one. And when this mini runs out, I will buy the full size. So this and the Tatcha, when my minis run out, I will have them in the full size. I'm going through this a lot faster than I anticipated, but it is the Kosas Wet Lip Oil Gloss. And I have the Clear Shade Jellyfish. I just love this. Like it's just, it's so, so nice. I like that it gives your lips that nice hydrated slip, but it never feels heavy, never feels sticky, and your lips don't feel dehydrated after wearing it. So it does have a nice kind of like hydrating property to it, which I really enjoy. I hope they never discontinue it because it's such a good gloss. And this is the It Cosmetics Vitality Lip Flush in the shade News Anchor Blue. It's what I have on now. Um, I love this over any color. Um, the blue doesn't really show up. What I like about blue is if you think about our artist color wheel, blue is the opposite side of the color wheel of yellow. So it will help kind of on camera, on video, neutralize any yellow tones in your teeth to make your teeth look whiter. So I, when I'm coming on camera, I want my teeth to look as white as I can make them look. So great one and it's so comfortable. It never makes my lips feel sticky or tacky and it just leaves a nice hydrated kind of slip to your lips. So I think I have until like mid-March to continue my love affair with this product, but this is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara and I have the shade Black Brown. I, this has been out for a long time. I have not tried it until recently and um, it's really, really good. Um, I like that it kind of gives me like a no makeup, makeup mascara look because I don't like thick, clumpy lashes. I like my lashes look very kind of separated and real. And for me, this does it. And I I could not be happier. So um, for me with my channel, I don't wear a lot of mascara. So I'm not one to have multiple tubes open at once. So test one, keep it for three months and then it's done. So I'm loving this one, highly recommend it. And when I run out of mascara, I will try that. I will definitely be picking this up again. So now the part of the video that makes me uncomfortable, but you know, if you have similar taste to me, then knowing the products that didn't work for me might also be very beneficial for you. So I don't have many products that didn't work for me because normally I like to find a way to make a product work, but these few products just didn't work for me in any way, shape or form. So the first one, which is very sad because I love this brand. And that is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. I know so many people love this. I've had other people I recommend it to that love it. it. My husband likes it. Just for me, I don't know what it is, but kind of like the fronts of my cheeks and the corners of my eye, this without fail makes me kind of like my skin kind of have like this burny, tingly feel. And you know, that's normal. Like it happens with other CeraVe products. It can happen with any product. So we can, our skin can react to any product. It's not saying this is a bad product. It's just saying that this particular product did not work for me and my skin. So, um, and that's true with every product. There's no product that doesn't work for everyone. And this just was a product that did not work for me. Um, if you have more kind of normal to dry skin and you like a more gentle creamy cleanser it's a really nice one um like i said just for me a little bit of burning tingly and my la roche posay doesn't do that so i'm gonna continue with my la roche posay and this is to go to my husband's shower okay like i said some products just don't work for anyone i i don't know who this is gonna work for and i bought this because it was a brand i'd never tried and um I've tried their hand soaps and I like their hand soaps. I like what the brand does, but it is this Live Clean Sport All Mineral SPF 45. Um, I didn't like this. I just, I did not like this at all. Like, I don't know how to make it work. Like, let me show you, like. Okay, so there you can see on the back of my hand. And think, for sunscreen, I like to do like one fourth of a teaspoon, but so you can see like, it still very much has like a white cast. With my sunscreen, if something has a white cast, I will kind of separate my layering application. So saw it with that first layer. 
kind of square space my hand, I would do two layers of that one. So second layer. And you can see it's just got this like white cast. Um, it's not showing up on camera. Let me bring it closer. Uh, it just looks glossy. I don't know, on camera that looks really pretty, but in real life, it's just got this strong white cast that makes my face look blue. I like what this sunscreen wants to do, but just with the white cast, I feel like unless your skin is very, very fair, this isn't gonna work for a wide range of people. And with it being all mineral, it has like that tackiness to it. And um, it's just not the easiest to wear sunscreen, so. Um, if you're very fair, try it out. You might like it. If you don't, if you're not bothered by a white cast, you might like it. Um, but for me, that's a strong skip. There's better sunscreens that does what that does. We only got three more products. So the first one is this Physician's Formula 24 Karat Gold Setting Spray. It's like a little paint can sound like thing. And it looks really pretty once you shake it. My issue is... The spray is kind of like those ones that comes out in spurts, like it kind of like spits at you. And the gold flecks end up all over your clothes. Like it is like a glitter bomb went off on your clothes. So um, I was, the first time I tried this, I was wearing like a leather jacket from Zara and this product is like embedded in that leather jacket. I mean, it's a Zara faux leather jacket. So um, I don't know. And I can't get the glitter off of it. I've tried like, tape, lint roller, everything. And it's like this glitter is embedded into that jacket. So um, yeah, skip this one. Milani Strobe Light and Afterglow and then the Maybelline Master Chrome and Rose Gold. For me, they're just, they're too metallic and on the skin, they emphasized a lot of texture. And um, I've got highlighters, drugstore and affordable that do not emphasize my skin texture. So for me, just, not something I love and I'll be sanitizing these and giving these to stay. And I don't know how this happened, but when I was editing, I noticed I forgot a product that was not, that did not work for me. It was just an overall miss. It was the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. Um, this I reviewed right before I did the YSL All Hours Foundation. So two Foundation Fridays ago. This just, it didn't work for me. I found I was able to make it work best with no primer, no sunscreen with my fingers. And um, even then I wasn't able to build it up very much. So I don't know, it had drying alcohol, it does have fragrance and it was just, if I got it too close to my eyes, it burned. That could be the inclusion of the three different chemical filters it has in this one. Um, just for me, this was a pass. I know there's several other people who really love this foundation. So just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it couldn't work for you. Look, I match. So anyway, I'm finished with that. So back to the video. A little bit of a longer, more chatty video than I think this will be the longest video I've put out to date. We'll share with you products that I've loved and products that just didn't work for me over the months of January and February. And I hope that was helpful. If you want to know more about what videos are coming out every month and like my top five favorite products of the month, check out my website, which is thezackdooley.com. Sign up for my monthly newsletter because with my monthly newsletter, I'm sharing a kind of recap of all the videos I put out during the previous month and a sneak peek of what content is coming out. So you will know ahead of time what's coming out and you'll also kind of get like a sneak peek at what my top five products. So if you were going to ask me of everything you tried out this month, what are five products that you would go buy right now? And those are the five products I mentioned. So if that sounds interesting, check out my website, sign up for the newsletter. This is also a big favorite because I've mentioned in other videos, I was really, really nervous about starting kind of like my social media journey and I was scared. And over the last month, like I've just, I've gained like, my little subscriber family and I couldn't be happier. Everyone's so nice and 
it's just been a really positive experience, especially like on my Instagram. Instagram is great. I post stories, I post behind the scenes and there's just so much great feedback and I've enjoyed getting to interact with new people and helping people. So um, thank you all for being such a big favorite for the months of January and February and going forward, I do not feel like that's going to change at all. So thank you all and know that all of you are a big favorite. Stay tuned. I've got more videos. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what type of videos you would like to see between here and Instagram so I can kind of plan out videos based on what all of you want to see. So thanks for spending some time with me today, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!